I should do that too. Hold on. Can you, you can hear me all good and everything? Yeah, you're, you're good. Awesome. It says we're live. Oh, there we go. Hey. All right, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Oh, there we go. I got to mute my YouTube. All right. Another episode of Federico Talks Watchers. It is Thursday. You know what that means. I'm live with T3, the What's time up? teller. What is up, everybody? Happy to be here. Thank you, Federico, for having me on. Uh, brother, is it true I heard you invented time? Um, I actually didn't invent time. I just tell it. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's like the best tagline out of like any YouTube show ever. <laughs> so cheesy, but it works out. So I'm happy. I'm happy that it stuck. By the way, guys, if you don't know who Jory Goodman is, the time teller, link to his channel in the description below. I implore you to go subscribe. He made a great video yesterday about Satan himself, also known as MVMT Watch Company, um, <laughs> which, which you guys know are like grail watches of mine. Uh, so we're, you know, totally. we should go check that out. We're actually going to spend this whole entire live stream just talking about how we want MVMT watches. <laughs> yeah, if you guys didn't know, I mean, I don't know. I can't decide. MVMT or Vincero? Vincero's pretty grill worthy. <laughs> I'm going to be sick, Fed. I'm going to be sick to my stomach. We keep talking about it. <laughs> it's, well, listen. Okay, here's a true question. Before we get into the nitty gritty, movement or an Invicta? You have to pick one and you have to wear it for the rest of your life. Uh, well, okay, I'm going to kind of circumvent this. I would use the sheer weight of an Invicta against my temple, and then I would be, uh, I'd be down for the count. So I would choose Invicta, but I'd probably off myself with it. Uh, I, I'd, I'd rather just cut off both wrists. <laughs> I'll just have nubs. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hello to everybody that's joining us. We got Jared Packer, Michael Chatter, Briar Blues, AC4, uh, Jolu Puki, Valen. Welcome, all you guys. Today, we're going to talk about Grail Watches, collecting Grail Watches, our watch collecting goals. As all you guys know, this is not um, a cheap hobby. Um, you know, everybody has watches that are unattainable right now. Everybody is striving to something eventually attainable or not. Uh, we're not sure yet. But today, me and, and, and Jory are going to talk about kind of what are our watch collecting goals? What do we want to have in the collection down the line, um, you know, funds permitting? Um, and that way, you guys can kind of see our tastes and, you know, we can explain what we pick. Um, and also, I suggest you guys pull up another browser window uh, with Google Images. That way, you can type in the watches we're talking about right. so you'll get a better understanding of uh, what we're discussing. Right. That's actually... A good heads up, yeah, because we're going to be throwing out some reference numbers, um, and it might be helpful for you guys to kind of um, check them out real time as, as we talk about them. Real quick, Fed, because I know uh, they're going to pounce on us. What are you wearing right now? In honor of a live show with you, I'm rocking the SKX Malaysian version. Nice and cheap, Ooh. but one of my favorites. Heck yeah, my SKX 007 is the Malaysian version as well. Uh, because if you spend money, extra money, on the J version, you have been lied to, guys. They are the exact same, and I know it's heartbreaking. Um, they are the exact same. Okay, I am wearing uh, my Rolex 2940, my bubble back. This is the first watch I ever reviewed here on YouTube. Um, and uh, it's kind of, kind of fitting, because we're going over other uh, grails. This was kind of an, an initial grail of mine. Um, and we're going to be talking about other watches that we want to kind of knock off our list in the future. Uh, so this is actually a question on my channel I get a ton. Um, like, what are your grails? Uh, what are you, like, gunning for? I've actually made a video where I think I brought up five of my grails. Uh, but this is kind of a theme where I think both of us could have uh, infinite installments. Because uh, I, as far as watch collecting goes, my, my lust... For certain watches, just it just never it's never ending. You you jump down the rabbit hole and you're screwed. Um, you just want everything. So 
Oh, I agree. And another problem I have is, is I feel like an adulterer when it comes to watches. I don't want one watch or two watches. I want all watches. So, like, exactly. my grill list is, is ridiculously long and never changing. Right. And I'm very happy uh, Fed kind of – we give each other a heads up on, on what we're going to talk about. Uh, and I was very thankful he gave me a couple days heads up because I really had to, like, narrow down what the heck I was going to choose um, because, yeah, it, it, it's it's very hard to, to – like whittle down my my huge grail list but well, uh, dude, you know jory i was i was thinking about this last night must have been like 1 a.m and i was thinking about this video and what i was gonna you know list off and like after 20 minutes of thinking my list was like 12 watches deep at which point i was just like screw this i'm not gonna make a list i'll just completely wing it because everybody who knows me knows that i just i want everything <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I narrowed it. I, I think I stopped at around eight, and I was like, "Okay, whatever. We'll we'll, we'll just swap, and then we'll we'll end when the time comes." But uh, yeah, why don't you why don't you start us off, Fed? It's your channel. Why don't, why don't you kick it off? Sure. Um. Well, you know what, guys? I've been looking at my collection. A lot of you guys know what it is. Um. No real high horology uh, in there. You know, some great pieces, of course. My IWC. Vintage Collection Engineer, um, my, my Sub Hulk, a couple of Panerais, um, my Seiko, my, my Torno Triple Date, you know, all great watches. But I think the next thing I'm really lusting after is something that I've really preached about, but that I never uh, really got in my collection. Well, correction, I didn't get it once, it only lasted a month, and then I sold it. I want a precious metal quote-unquote, hot horology watch. A watch that isn't necessarily going to get a lot of wrist time, but a watch which I can take out of my box and stare at and uh, kind of just fall in love with even if I'm not wearing it. I'm having a tough time deciding what that's going to be, but I think I went with something a little bit funky. Uh, and that is, and guys, Google it if you don't know what it is, the Breguet Tradition Skeleton Watch in white gold which is essentially an inverted pocket watch with uh, all the, the, the you know sexy bits in the front exposed. Um, and the time telling surface is actually tiny. So it's not a very practical watch, but man, is it, is it really, it's like what dreams are made of that thing. That, is, that thing, that thing is, is like the definition of wearable art. Uh, I am not a huge skeleton watch fan. Uh, I'm very, very picky with, with open hearts and skeletons, but Breguet does that watch so well. Um, that, would, that, would, that would be on my list as well. It's a very, and, and very cool truth, watch. And, and the truth, Jory, is, and people are going to kill me for this. They're going to be like, oh, that's a lot of money. But, you know, for a watch that retails in the 30s, I mean, there's not a huge market for them. So I can pick them up brand new for about 15 grand. And yeah, I'm not going out today and spending 15 grand, it's a ton of money, but it is a lot more attainable than what people think. And it is something that realistically, I can see myself actually adding to my collection uh, relatively soon. I don't mean a few months, maybe a couple years, but I definitely will own one. It's doable, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um, what about you, brother? What, what's your first one? Well, okay, so I'm, I'm actually swinging for the fences just like you. Um, so this is going to be a precious metal watch for sure. Uh, this is probably going to take me a little bit longer than uh, the Breguet. Um, but this is the new, or I should say current, uh, Patrimony Traditionnel uh, Tourbillon from Vacheron Constantine. And if any of my viewers are here uh, in this live stream, it looks like a bunch of them are. What's up, Jared Packer? Uh, I see him. <laughs> Uh, uh, you guys will know I, I'm not a big Torbjorn guy. Uh, I think it is one of the most overhyped uh, additions or complications to a watch It's the most ever. useless complication ever made. Absolutely. Um, but I think that Vacheron did such a cool job adding their logo into the Torbjorn uh, and it's right down by the six o'clock and it, it, it's a 42 millimeter. So I know a lot of people will say that's a bit big for a dress watch. 
Uh, I have seven and a half inch wrists. I'm a big dude. I could pull it off. Um, I'm sure it fits under the cuff just perfectly. I, I've never worn one, um, but I would like it in uh, the rose gold. Uh, I think it looks amazing. And uh, yeah, so that would be my first grail. It's an incredibly expensive watch. I am confident I will do it. I, I'm confident in myself. I will do it. Um, I don't know if it's going to take me a couple of years, probably more. But uh, yeah, the Patrimony Traditionnel Tourbillon from Vacheron. Um, you know what I like about that pick, Jory? It's kind of similar to mine. We're both not getting something extremely practical. It's something that more expresses our love for horology because a tourbillon, just like my skeleton, is something that you know doesn't necessarily do a function, but when you're sitting back like on your couch and you're chilling, you can kind of pull it out and you can stare at it and you can fall in love with it all over again. Right. It's right. And, and that is just a beautiful watch. And uh, yeah, that's so that would be my, my main precious metal pick. And um, just kind of doing a twofer here. Uh, one of my overarching watch goals is to have something from the Holy Trinity. I know I've spoken mm. to Fed about this. Um, and I'm not a huge AP guy. Um, uh, Patek, I'm, I'm more leaning. If, if it's between AP and Patek, I, I'd lean more towards Patek. But out of the Holy Trinity itself, I'm a huge Vacheron guy. So, um, yeah, that and would I be my first thing. It should be in the Holy Trinity, but obviously it's not. Uh, right. Um, I guess next I'm going to go with one that is significantly more expensive, but I think it is my definition of a luxury watch. Mm -hmm. um, once again, guys, pull up a, a window if you need to Google it. And that is the Elanganzona Datagraph in platinum with a platinum bracelet. Um, it's the smoothest, silkiest chronograph ever made. It's very understated. Nobody knows just by looking at it that it's almost a six-figure watch. Right. Even though pre-owned, it's closer to like the forty thousand range. Platinum, um, such a you know, just the most expensive of the noble metals, and it's got the most luxurious chronograph movement ever made. The whole purpose of that movement, from conception to inception, is to be luxurious. Um, it's not more accurate, it just feels better, it looks better. And when someone like Philippe Dufour, who's considered the best watchmaker in the world, says that that's the best chronograph in the world, I sit up and I listen. Right. And the datagraph has <clears throat> recently uh, kind of cultivated, the, the, or I should say accrued, this cult following. Um, and I know like F.P. Jorn guys, like all these grand complication guys, um, when they're asked about their favorite watches, uh, they often mention the the longa uh, datagraph. And that, yeah, that's just a badass watch. And it's not a grand complication. I mean, it's just a chronograph right. with the big day, you know. But if you look at the back of that movement, Jory, I mean, I could be wrong. So this is more of an open-ended question. It's also for you, Jory, and for you guys in the chat. Is there a more beautiful movement than a longa datagraph movement? I don't no. know. They do a beautiful job with it, for sure. That's probably my favorite part about Longa, is is their case backs and their movements. Oh, for sure. I guess we should, a couple seconds, we should acknowledge some of the guys in the chat. We got David Williams, who says he wants a Vacheron Constantine chronograph. Great job. Uh, Watch Doctor says, if, you, if we didn't mention uh, the datagraph, he would have been disappointed. So I'm glad we're not disappointing anyone. And then Paul Smith says, Federico, do you think the Omega Ultraman limited edition price will take off like the Silver Snoopy? Um, Paul, you know, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this because I think the first Speedy Tuesday is artificially inflated. But now that there's a Speedy Tuesday 2, um, no, I don't think it'll take off. I mean, yes, I know they look expensive, but everybody that bought the Speedy Tuesday is a dealer. Like 80% of the people that bought it are actually dealers. So the fact that they're being, they're asking nine grand is because all the dealers have one. No one's actually paying for it. I remember like the day after it came out, I got like four phone calls. I got offered five different pieces. Um, I don't know. I think it's a bubble. But uh, what do you think, Jory? The new Speedy Tuesday. 
Um, okay, so here, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, this is funny. I brought I brought this here. Hopefully, you guys get a big chuckle. I'm a huge Ultraman fan. Okay, I I grew up with Ultraman. <laughs> um, and uh, I am totally bummed that like it was gone before I even heard about it. Okay, um, it was like, oh, would you like the wait list? Why don't you try refreshing a million times? Um, I know people were complaining left and right about uh, the website. People are writing to me, what's going on? What's going on? I didn't even know about it until it was like long gone. But I'm kicking myself because I freaking love Ultraman. Um, now, one of the subdials actually has kind of a sneaky loom face. Uh, and it's a big orange silhouette of his helmet. And I think that's just such a cool touch. However, what I will say is it's probably not worth uh, what they're charging and what the resellers will charge because guess what? Uh, I will, I'll, I'll bet you 85% of the people that scoop that watch up aren't keeping it for themselves. They're keeping it no, to, for sure. to, to resell it. And that's a huge bummer. Um, but yeah, but that's Jory, my take You know how many times a week, you know, because I'm a watch dealer, guys, obviously, plug delraywatch.com. You know how many times a week people call me and they're like, Fed, I just got the new Pepsi like yesterday. It's a lot of stickers on it. Do you want to buy it? And I'm like, sure. How much? And they're like, oh, 19 grand. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you can keep that. Right. Go ahead. I'm keep like, it. Like, you, you, you can keep it all you want. I mean, no chance. Yeah, that's, that is a big bummer. I, I wish, uh, I don't know. I, well, here's what I will say. The guys, um, write this down. Google it. Keep it in your little notes. The Speedmaster to get right now is the Speedmaster 57. Federico may agree or disagree. That is the watch to get, okay? Beautiful dial. Um, get it on the bracelet. Display case back. Gorgeous big si uh, uh, oversized rotor. Um, it, it, it's it's a beautiful watch. That is the watch to get if you're looking for a Speedmaster. And I incredibly really like reasonably priced. I, I really, really like that watch as well. Um, but I guess Jory, you've got a couple more. Uh, wait, I said I said the Lange data graph, so I think it's your turn, brother. So what's next right. on the royal list? What's next on the goals? Okay, well, I'm going to acknowledge two people in the chat right here, real quick. Sure. Um, Anestis Petitis. I don't know who this is, but they said Amherst. Hello, what's up, Amherst? <laughs> um, uh, Tom US. Uh, said, Jory, do you remember when you called the Orient Mako an homage? I do. I do remember that because uh, we were comparing um, the Orient Mako to the SKX. Orient Mako has um, just kind of your typical diving bezel, three o'clock crown, crown guards. Um, that is much closer to a sub homage than uh, the SKX's design. So um, I was merely using that kind of to express how different and unique uh, the SKX is in design and how underrated I think that is. I think we need to give it a bit more props uh, for being so unique. And the Mako, a bit... Uh, a bit Mako is a better movement. Oh, yeah. No, and, and, and there's a lot more functionality there. You get hacking and hand blind. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to argue that. Um, I'm just saying... One looks a bit different than the others. Mako, a little bit kind of vanilla for me. But let's move on to uh, let's move on to my next pick, guys. Um, now this one is probably the least attainable on my list, and it's not even because of price. Uh, it's I, I mean, don't get me wrong. This is absolutely cost prohibitive for me right now. Um, but it's also because they're just it's just incredibly scarce. Like it's it's hard to even come across one. Um, even if you were to find some broker to source it for you, um, you'd be hard pressed to to even see one. Um, and this is the Rolex reference number sixty sixty two. Okay, six zero six two. Google it, guys. Uh, this is a triple date. If you can find one, especially like on a bracelet, this has. I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call here. So unprofessional, my bad. Um, if you can find one or even see one, you've accomplished something. Because, uh, like, e even seeing one in person is 
incredibly difficult. Um, I've seen them sell for like over eight hundred thousand dollars. So it's it's yeah, ridiculous watch. Well, this is what this is. Sorry, I got a phone call too. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's the UPS guy. I got to ship out watches today. But I was saying, um, yeah, it's it's what the Cellini should have been like. Right. I like the new Cellinis. They're doing the right something right. But the six zero six two, especially with that little star uh, hour, those little star hour markers. Right. Why can't Rolex make a dress watch like that now? It'll sell like hotcakes. It really right. would. I would buy one tomorrow. It's it, but the. the the 6062 reference number is so understated. It's smaller. Um, it's not nearly as flat. It looks like an oyster case. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's just a beautiful watch. And uh, oftentimes when I look down at my wrist when I'm wearing my like reference number 1500, um, I just like pretend in my head that I'm wearing a 6062. And I'd be like, ah. Oh. I'm happy. <laughs> Dude, you have an impeccable taste. That is a kick-ass watch. Thank you, man. Yeah. Kick-ass watch. watch. Um, right, so that's going to be incredibly hard for me to find. Uh, who knows in the future? Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed, guys. But, Fed, what is your next pick? Next pick. Um, off the top of my head, I want to go with an independent. I want to go with something, you know, not super expensive. Um, and everybody knows I love the Moon Phase. So if you guys don't know, uh, and even I don't know much about them, Sarah Peniva. Um, I'm going to have to Google this. <laughs> yeah, it's even I don't know much about them. Sarah Peniva, S-A-R-A-P-E-N-V-A. Uh, an independent guy who focuses on Moon Phase. Um, mainly uses outsourced movements, uh, you know, voucher movements, concepto movements, stuff like that. But he makes the most beautiful moon phase watches out there. And as somebody who loves the useless yet romantic complication that is the moon phase, I really want to own one. And the fact that they're a small batch, you'll probably never see somebody else wearing it. I right. don't know, man. That, that's what luxury is all about to me. Yeah, scarcity kind of, uh, if you know, you know. Um, and that's definitely an if you know, you know watch. It's not peacocking, right? It, it's right. it's there to satisfy yourself, as opposed to people who see it, right? And that's that's actually, I mean, I, I mean, the the patrimony tourbillon traditionnel or traditionnel tourbillon from Vacheron that kind of goes against my uh, like that that is kind of peacocking. I mean, rose gold sure. forty two millimeter, um, but kind of my whole theme in my collection is like understatement, right? Like the Rolex 2940, you would probably not even look at my wrist wearing this. But then if you found out what it was, and we spoke about the significance of it, that could start a big conversation. Um, same with like that Rolex uh, 6062. Most people wouldn't even know what it was. It's not big and bold. It's, it's, it's much more subdued. Um, and yeah, and e even what, like, I always harp on this. My Grand Seiko J14070, the reason that is maybe one of my favorite watches that I own is because literally only I know what is on my wrist and, like, sure. and, and sig the sheer significance of that watch. Um, and so, yeah, I'm with you. The, 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 the if you know, you know factor is huge for me. And, uh, yeah, makes, Even though makes collecting really fun. You know, it's your turn, but next, I've got, like, the biggest peacocking watch of all time. So I'm, I'm not – I'm still guilty of it. Right. Okay, so mine's going to be much less peacocking. Um, this is a fairly thin watch. It's a 39 millimeter. Uh, it's one of the best modern dress watches I think you can buy. Uh, and it is – Google this, guys. It's the Creter, C R E. Uh -huh. D O R Aichi E I C H I 2. Not the Aichi 1, the Aichi 2. Um, the difference between those is the Aichi 1 has a power reserve indicator on the dial. Um, in the Aichi 2, they moved it to the back to keep the porcelain dial as clean as possible. So the dial is porcelain. This is all made in house. It is a ridiculous watch, spring drive, because Creter is owned by Seiko. Um, 
it's one of the most elegant, I hate using this word, it's the most elegant watch, honestly. Um, I think in modern times when we're talking modern dress watches, so simple, uh, nobody would look twice at it, uh, but just the indexes, the blue indexes and how they're on the porcelain, uh, the blue hands, and of course, the smooth sweeping spring drive movement, um, 39 millimeter, it, it, uh, that would be my dress watch. It's around 30 grand, I think, so I'm going to have to wait a little bit, but um, and there's no pre-owned because that is they're, not they're, easy yeah. to find. There, there's no pre-owned and they don't uh, produce these in great numbers. So um, very low production with Creator watches. Uh, but they also they also make it in rose gold, I believe. I would probably go for, um, I think it's platinum. Um, I, don't, I doubt it's stainless steel, but I'd, I'd go for that, that look over the rose gold. But... Um, yeah, beautiful watch. That's my next pick. Very subdued, no peacocking, but I'd love to hear yours. Oh, dude, mine is like the complete opposite. If if Creedor got into the same room as this watch, it would have a stroke. <laughs> and that is the Rolex nicknamed Patriot. It is a solid <laughs> rose gold GMT yep. Master II yep. with a ruby and sapphire bezel. This is not a Dude. tool watch, guys. This is not the tool watch GMT, okay? It might be a watch worn by tools, but it's not a tool watch. Um, <laughs> but I still want, listen, I can picture myself in like a silk bathrobe wearing a GMT Patriot and like going onto my balcony and surveying my land. It's yeah. one of these illusions of grandeur like I have in my head. It is a badass watch, though. That is, and that is a whole lot of watch right there. That is a whole lot of watch, dude. It's just a diamond set. I mean, baguette channel set baguettes, like all color matched. Like I, my family are jewelers. I have an appreciation for gemstones. It's so sick. Like I think my mom would disown me if I ever put that thing on my wrist. But I don't care. I oh want my one. God. I want one. I want one. I want one. Okay, BT in the comment section said, very Italian. <laughs> Dude, what, what can I say? It's... Oh, my God, wait, Fed. Okay, Ed Busto is saying, most Miami thing ever, Federico. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's a strip club watch. It's like when I go to, like, 11, that's the watch you want to wear. <laughs> I'm aware it's bad taste, guys. I'm totally aware. But that's the beauty of YouTube. I'm, I'm being honest. Like, it's the ugliest watch in the world, and I've never wanted anything more. Dude. People have, Oh, my God. Falling wickets. Federico Liberace. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the ultimate version of an SKX Pepsi. Yeah, but dude, gold It's, 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 it's literally the next step up, Fed. You get, you get it, your SKX 009, and, like, where else do you have to go? You just go for the Patriot. That's, like... <laughs> Dude, I could have said I wanted the entire bracelet to be Pave Diamond, but I didn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> this is too Paul good. SG. I would love to see Federico in a silk bathrobe. Dude, if I wasn't in the office, I'd be in a silk bathrobe right now. Power move, dude. Only power <laughs> move, man. With, like, whale scrotum slippers. Like, whale leather like, <laughs> scrotum slippers. <laughs> Oh, God. Pete is going to have a field day with that one. I know, all right? <laughs> um, anyway, guys, we're, we're reaching the half hour here. Um, these are getting... These episodes, the more... like the, Now we've done, I think, four of them. Half an hour is just not long enough, Jory. Like, I, there's real. so much more I could touch I could on. talk about so many more grails. That, and, and and I love interacting with you guys, the, uh, the commenters. It's It's so fun reading from you guys. And I want to encourage you, I know this is Fad's channel, but mm -hmm. um, I want to encourage you guys, keep commenting. I absolutely love reading reading from the comment section and interacting with you guys. So don't be scared. If you have anything to say, say it, because um, I'm, I'm going to speak for Federico here. But we, we wouldn't be doing these live streams without you guys. So it means a whole lot that you that you join in. So thank you so much, guys. Oh, yeah, for sure. If it wasn't for you guys, there would be no point in doing this and actually um you know i gotta cut it short now i gotta get back to work but i i'm gonna talk to jory right now about maybe organizing um 
like another live stream that's maybe like an hour long where it's purely based on like viewer interactions, so like maybe a Q and A. Um, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, leave a comment in the video. I'm gonna talk to Jory about it now. It just came to my mind, and hopefully we'll be able to do that for you guys. Sounds good to me. If you guys want it, we'll get on it. So yeah, leave us a comment. And, and as always, guys, comment on the video. Let us know how we did and uh, what we could improve on. And, and yeah, we're gonna keep it coming. All right, guys, thank you for sticking around for another episode of Federico Talks Watches featuring the Time Teller. We are going to be uh, same time next week, different place on the Time Teller's channel, so you guys are going to want to go and subscribe, um, and we'll definitely catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.